Bridge News operates two stations here in South Florida, where I'm at right oh, now, in Miami. Um, mm-hmm. Both of those I cannot receive here for various reasons. The first one is on the low VHF band. Oh, I see. I okay. have a low VHF antenna, and I'm covered by OTARD. You know, the mm. over-the-air reception devices rule to yeah. have this ginormous thing in my apartment to receive a local TV station that's only nine miles away, and I still can't even receive it. Huh. And, mm. you know, that's going back to 8VSB and especially time interleaving, which is a major problem. Uh, there are it, it is just such a different world now that we live in with all yes. of these cheap electronics from Timu, from Alibaba, that, you know, I mean, half the stuff sold on Amazon now I'm sure isn't passing some sort of FCC regulatory check for emissions on RF interference. And it's gotten to the point where in when I was in a dorm room, now when I'm in an apartment, the VHF band was just completely unusable. The, the high VHF band was okay. The low VHF the low band... Has got, there's a lot of other devices that are probably just blasting all over the place. You're absolutely right. Oh, yeah, right. it is. I mean, all you have to do is take a spectrum analyzer yeah, yeah, and it just, is, yeah. it is insane. Cool. Which is why I'm personally advocating for an ATSC 3.0 mandate on the low VHF band specifically. I personally believe that the FCC should mandate solely either HTI, hybrid time interleaving, or extended time interleaving with a maximum of like 16 non-uniform QAM and relatively lower code rates. Otherwise, you're not even serving the public. That's my opinion because, you know, you're, you're... Populous, your population is not going to be able to receive anything. I'm the not other alternative away. is to completely do away with VHF, right? Just stick to UHF for uh, above a certain band for all your uh, television, broadcast television needs and reassign the low UHF to something else because it is very interference prone. Very, very. And especially when people can't, don't want to put up big antennas, they don't want to put up, you know, the, the VHF antennas. So, I mean, this this is, it's time to think about that too. I mean, in ATSC3, for example. So. Well, I, I think for me, it's, you know, low VHF does have some really good properties, especially sure. in rural Indoor. communities with, with mm-hmm. mountain ranges and hills and especially forested areas. It works better with multipath sure. just as a, you know, longer wavelength. You know, I want to personally keep it around because, you know, there's going to be areas, you know, in the boondocks in these these very hilly areas that won't be able to get UHF even with QPSK, mm-hmm. you know, in an extremely low code rate that would if it was hot, if it was low VHF. And maybe, you know, does that require that person out in the middle of nowhere to have, you know, a a low VHF capable antenna? Maybe it doesn't have to be. Maybe it can be less tuned or not as good for the low VHF band Mm -hmm. and still be able to, you know, provide some sort of usable service to them. And that's why I personally kind of want to keep it because... No, but uh, the the FCC can regulate that, right? They can do rural uh, spectrum allocation can be done where the rural areas can get the VHF uh, allocations. And urban areas, there is no point in making VHF allocations for two reasons. One, by the way, I've Long time ago, I I was talking to the FCC about exactly this topic that urban areas, because of all this interference, uh, VHF is becoming, and plus people don't want to put up bigger antennas in urban areas anyways. So so what is the point in allocating, you know, you can do something else with that band, but you know, this is FCC's uh, spectrum planning is is very opaque, I must say.